Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. <clears throat> so today is the beginning of the 29 week session where we are going to revise all the 19 subjects topic wise from the most high yielding towards the least uh, asked topics and uh, with a more focus on what is being much more frequently asked. So we welcome our online students, Dr. Raghavendra from Tirupati, Guntur, Jabalpur, Dr. Purohiti and from the students at Vizag. This week we are going to review ENT. Totally ENT has got uh, 28 most high yield topics whether it is for the final year path 1 MBBS exams or whether it is for the entrance, we need to have a conceptual clarity on all these topics. <clears throat> so every day we will give you one daily test paper containing 50 to 60 questions. Beforehand only you need to answer those uh, questions and uh, we will also have a discussion in the middle. Because continuously to learn is a boring job. For a while, if you are having uh, an interactive session where you are answering, then you will be much more energetic. So that is the whole idea. So let us make the great beginning. <coughs> is the voice clear? Just check with everybody. Yes. The anatomy is the most important topic in the ENT on which a lot of questions come, highest number of questions in fact. The external pinna, the entire pinna except its lobule and the outer part of the external acoustic uh, meatus, it is all made up of yellow cartilage, yellow elastic cartilage covered with the skin. What is meant by incisura terminalis is my question to all of you. There is no cartilage between the tragus and the crust of the helix and this area is called as incisura terminalis and why is this important? Because you can be able to make an incision into this area and you will not cut through the cartilage. That's the reason you can use it for the end oral approach in the surgery of the external auditory meatus or the mastoid. That's the reason you need to remember. Incisura terminalis is what need to be basically remembered. This how incisura terminalis you can make an incision without damaging the underlying cartilage. Now, do we use the cartilage of the ear for any reconstructive purposes in the surgery? Definitely. The cartilage from the tragus perichondrium from the tragus or concha and the fat from the lobule of the ear are frequently used in the reconstructive surgery of the middle ear is what you are going to ultimately remember. Similarly, those who are having a depressed nasal bridge, for them the conchal cartilage can be used in order to correct their nasal bridge which is being depressed. And also for the repair of the defects in the LA of the nose, we use the skin and cartilage from the pinna is what we are going to ultimately remember. Now doctor, one of the million dollar question frequently asked in the entrance is uh, external acoustic canal. I am very happy today we have Dr. Surain, Dr. Vinod, and the students from Anantapur and from Dhavangiri. We are having about four students from Dhavangiri, very good. And uh, some more students from Hyderabad. So today the technology has grown to such a level that a teacher can broadcast a live class to the students in any part of the world. And one advantage is if you have a night duty, you can't attend a class because we conduct all 29 weeks from today until October 3rd week. 
Every day there is a class evening 5 to 8. Every day there is a quiz which we will going to, we will be debating. We will be encouraged to read every day. So if you miss on a night duty, still you can be able to log in the video library from your home if you have an internet and can review the today's lecture which will be available for you. So that is another advantage of uh, the mobile learning in the modern era. So we welcome all of you. Another seven, another 29 weeks which is around seven to eight months. If you invest every evening of you with us, I promise you that you will be in the top 100 ranks. There is no one who can stop you. If you can be able to spend another couple of hours along with us every evening, we will be revising totally 1250 topics and uh, make sure that you are equipped with all the possible questions which are going to be asked in the tomorrow's exam. So doctor, external acoustic canal, what is the length of it is a favorite question. 24 millimeters along its posterior wall and it is not a straight tube. Typically its outer part is directed upwards, backwards, medially and its inner part is directed downwards, forwards and medially. That is the reason what is the way that if you want to examine the tympanic membrane while doing an otoscopic examination, how do you want to move the tragus 